pattern we want to look at still in molecular physics is binding energy. Binding energy. Now, how are you going to describe the binding energy? What is binding energy? Binding energy will be, be put in two or three different ways, depending on the level of the learner or whosoever. Now, a simple description, the binding energy is the minimal amount of energy that is required to separate the different particles that are present in the nucleus. Have in mind, I said, the nucleus contains the proton and the, the, the neutron. So the minimal amount of energy that is required to separate those particles that are present in the nucleus is the binding energy. The binding energy can also be, be described, that means the other way you can describe the binding energy can be the, the amount of energy or the mass that is lost. Any mass that is lost converted to energy where smaller or a lighter nuclide or very small nuclide combined to form heavy nucleus. So the, the amount of mass that is lost, which is now converted to energy, when light and nuclide combine to form a heavy nucleus, is known as binding energy. I go over the two terms. Binding energy is defined as or described as the minimal amount of energy that is required to separate the different particles present in the nucleus. Or the binding energy is described or defined as the mass that is lost converted to energy when light and nuclide combine to form heavy nucleus. That means smaller nuclei are coming to form larger nucleus. When smaller nuclei are coming to form larger nucleus, there must be loss in mass. And that loss in mass is converted to energy. That energy is what you call binding energy. Now, if that is the case, we will make use of an equation here that the binding energy is represented by the expression here. The equation that we put for the binding energy is the atomic number. We have the right to say the atomic number, and then that has to be multiplied by the mass of the proton. The atomic number multiplied by the mass of the proton plus the mass number. We have the, the number of neutron again. Multiply that by the mass of the neutron minus the mass of the atom. So mathematically, the binding energy is calculated using the formula binding energy equals uh, the atomic number multiplied by the number of protons plus the number of neutrons multiplied by the mass of the neutron minus mass of the atom. So the initials, these symbols now are defined this way. The capital E equals the energy, which is the binding energy. This one becomes the binding energy. After the binding energy, it takes us to Z. A few minutes ago, we said Z is the atomic number. The atomic number. Uh, M substitute P represents mass of the proton. Mass of the proton. After that, we have N, which represents number of neutron. The number of neutron there. Then we have Mn, which represents the mass of the neutron. Mass of the neutron. Mass of the neutron. And the M, the small M that you see, represents the mass of the atom itself. Mass of atom. So the binding energy is calculated using the formula here. And the formula now, the terms that are in the formula are described this way. Now, for that particular one, it takes us to nuclear equation. We now look at nuclear equation here. Nuclear reaction, nuclear reaction or equation. Now, there are basic rules. There are two laws that favor nuclear equations. Details will be discussed for nuclear equations later. We look at what nuclear equations are. But for the, the time, we are looking at law of conservation of nuclear equations. There are two laws that govern nuclear reactions or nuclear equations. The first law says, that the total atomic number on the left hand side equals the total atomic number on the right hand side. That means when you add all the atomic number on the left hand side, whatever answer you get will be the same as by adding all the atomic number on the right hand side. Symbolically, what we mean by that, let us say we have an element here A, the atomic number here is X, there is another element here uh, B, let us say the atomic number is Y. And this one they are linked by two other elements here C, atomic number here can be uh, um, any letter of our choice B, and there is another one Q or D with atomic number of Q. 
So what the law says is the total atomic number on the left hand side equals the total atomic number on the right hand side. That means when you add all the atomic number on the left, the answer you get must be the same as the by adding all the atomic number on the right hand side. By that, if I say x plus y, the answer here becomes p plus q. We know very well that the numbers are represented by the source state. Down there are the atomic number. When I add these two figures on the left, I will also add the ones on the right. I will get the same result. That is what the law says. Now for this, the second law says the sum of the mass numbers on the left must be equal to the sum of the mass numbers on the right. That means when you add all the mass numbers on the left, whatever answer you get will be the same as adding all the mass numbers on the right. We know very well that the mass numbers are figures that are written at the top. We can even call this small n, small n, small n. Let us say uh, small a is here. We can even take this one as small b. So the values that are at the top are the mass numbers. When we now add this mass number, the mass numbers that are on the left, n plus n, are the two values on the left. When I add the two, I will get an answer that is the same as those on the right. I have a plus b. That means the two laws can now be stated as the sum of the atomic numbers on the left equals sum of atomic numbers on the right. Again, the other law says the sum of the mass numbers on the right equals the sum of mass numbers on the left. Those are the laws of nuclear equations. Now we look at the different particles that are present in nuclear equations, different particles that are present. We have what we call alpha particle, alpha particle, and the alpha particle is represented by that helium molecule 4 here and 2. The description for alpha particle is that anytime the element undergoes alpha particle radiation, the mass number is always reduced by 4, atomic number reduces by 2. So anytime a particular element undergoes alpha particle radiation, the mass number is always reduced by 4, atomic number reduces by 2. Now if I want to demonstrate that here, let us say calcium, which is uh, 20, atomic number is 20, mass number is 40. If this particular element undergoes alpha particle radiation, the mass number there reduces by 4. We always subtract 4 from the mass number, 40 minus 4 becomes 36. And the atomic number reduces by 2. 20 minus 2 becomes 18. Whatever element that is formed here, whatever element now that comes here can be any element of our triangle C X. Then plus the symbol for helium. The helium alpha particle is helium or 2. The name of the element will be provided. No bother with that. It's just an illustration. That anytime the element undergoes alpha particle radiation, the mass number is reduced by 4, atomic number reduces by 2. We we'll go to Beta particle radiation, beta. And beta is represented by E, 0 at the top and minus 1 down. What do we mean by that? That anytime the element undergoes beta particle radiation, the mass number remains the same, atomic number is increased by 1. Anytime the element undergoes beta particle radiation, the atomic number remains, the mass number remains the same, but the atomic number is increased by 1. Let us demonstrate that. For instance, if we have uh, the same calcium 20, uh, the mass number is 40, the atomic number 20. When this one undergoes beta particle radiation, the mass number remains the same. The same 40 we have here is the same 40 that comes here. Now the atomic number will increase by 1. If 20 is increased by 1, it is 20 plus 1, that becomes 21. Any element of our trend, let us see why, then plus the symbol here, 0 minus 1. That is how beta particle is related. Now you go to a uh, gamma particle, gamma relationship, gamma. Gamma. The gamma is represented by this, meaning anytime the element undergoes gamma particle radiation, both the mass number and the atomic number they remain the same. Anytime elements undergo gamma radiation, the atomic number and the mass number they remain the same. What do we mean by that? If the same question, which is uh, 40, 20, undergoes gamma particle radiation, we are going to have the same thing 40, 20 plus the symbol for the gamma 0, 0. So in short, when the element undergoes alpha particle radiation, the mass number is reduced by 4, atomic number reduces by 2. When the element undergoes beta particle radiation, the mass number remains the same, the atomic number is increased by 1. When the element undergoes gamma particle radiation, both the atomic number and the mass number they remain the same. 